Here's an episode of How to Analyse Poetry from the Learning Cauldron. Today, we'll be looking at Edwin Morgan's poem, Winter. Analyzing poetry involves identifying and dissecting the literary techniques that the poet uses effectively to explore the theme or themes of a poem. In his poem, Winter, Edwin Morgan explores the themes of death and deterioration, the relentless passing of time and nature. The title of the poem, Winter, immediately establishes the setting in time. Winter is the season when plant life, or much of it, dies away, and therefore this introduces the theme of death and deterioration right from the start of the poem. The poem is written in one long stanza, however there is a natural break between lines 10 and 11 when we move from a general description of the setting into a particular experience that the poet had. In the first two lines, the theme of death and deterioration is immediately established, as it was in the title. The word decay alliterates with the word dies. The phrase, the woods decay, is actually borrowed from a poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson called Tithonus, in which the character wishes for eternal life, but forgets to qualify that he wants to be eternally young. The imagery of the swan is interesting. Normally a swan might be seen as something positive, however here it is compared to a ghost and therefore there's the suggestion that it haunts Bingham's Pond. Bingham's Pond is actually a place in Glasgow so this helps to establish the setting firmly. The structural technique of repetition is used frequently in this poem and here is one instance of it. The repetition of goes goes helps to emphasize the fact that nature is moving on and that the seasons are passing it's the relentless passing of time there is life on this pond which is otherwise fairly still because it's frozen there are the gulls and the boys but eventually they too will go the reference to heavy to describe the light is very interesting it's not a a normal adjective that you would use for light but it's possibly the fact that there is no warmth in this light and therefore it seems slightly oppressive. Here there's an interesting play on words, a pun, because the word dyes, which was referenced up here, is spelt differently because it means colours. He's talking about the colours of the summer and how in the winter, as nature progresses through the seasons, the colours drain from the landscape. We have the swan white ice and it glints only crystal, which is see-through, and white So the colour has gone, and this symbolises the leeching of life from the environment. He says that the colour that perhaps would represent positivity, dearest blue, is not in sight, although he qualifies that a poet might find it because they have imagination. Moving on to the second part of this one stanza, he describes one particular scene, and it's very starkly described. The use of alliteration cut by evening cries and then the consonants of warring air creates an uncomfortable feel to this place. There is sound, the muffled hiss of blades escapes into breath. The boys, mentioned earlier, are skating, and there's the onomatopoeia of the word hiss, and then the sibilant qualities of the essays, which actually recreates the sound of skates whisking across the ice. But even that hint of life is going to go, fades off, fades off, and then again fade. You can see that repetition again is being used here effectively. And another structural technique that's used here is the power of the rule of three, the woods that fall, decay, and break. These are all very negative words. The tone here is bleak and dark, and the enjoyment is used after decay to lead on into the next line, and it shows the relentless process, the cyclical nature of the passing of time. Then we're told that the dark comes down, that the boys disappear, the shouts run off into the darkness, and we get the feeling that everything is going. We've already been told that the colours are fading, that things are decaying, now it's getting dark, the light has gone, the sound has gone, and the life, which was represented by the boys, has also gone, and we're left with a very still pond a pond that represents and symbolises death. The very negative and despondent tone is then accentuated by the use of a superb image. When fog drives monstrous down the dual carriageway, this is almost comparing fog to a dangerous driver out on the public roads. And we know that fog does cause accidents, just like dangerous drivers do, so it's a superb image. And the word choice of monstrous here suggests that the fog is something sinister and frightening. The reference to the direct west here is also interesting because the west is where the sun sets and that could be seen as the symbolism of the dying of the day but also the symbolism of death per se. The poet then leaves the pond and returns home and he says that even 
in his room, once he's back home in the safe confines of his own house, he's still perplexed by what he's seen. He says, I do not know about that grey, dead pane of ice. Death is an enigma. We know that it definitely happens, that is certain. But he and the rest of us cannot be sure exactly what happens after death. The word choice of grey, dead pane of ice is very effective here. It shows us the colour of the ice. It refers again to one of the main themes of the poem, dead. And then there's the imagery of a pane of ice, which is like glass. And yet we expect to see through glass. And here we're told that sees nothing and that nothing sees. The inversion here of the phrase sees nothing and nothing sees helps to emphasise the nihilistic tone at the end of this poem. The repetition of the word nothing also emphasises the cold reality that death is inevitable and final. I hope that's been helpful. See you next time.